Hey guys, so the other day I made a video about why I wouldn't recommend Brawl King Breaker or Breaker in general to new players. And I feel like there are a lot of people who kind of in my comments, well, some people agreed with me, right? They're like, yeah, I definitely see your point. I see that Brawl King Breaker probably isn't the best uh, character for a new player to play. And also agreed that both breakers in general are probably not good for them either. But I feel like there were also a good number of people in that video who were like, hey, what are you talking about? Brawl King Breaker is a great class for new players. It's everything you want, does damage, it's not that hard to play, etc., etc." right? And I think what it comes down to when it comes to these types of like viewpoints and kind of opinions, it really comes down to a, I guess, misalignment for what they think is like a new player experience and what's ideal for a new player experience and what for me, I think is ideal for a new player experience. And I wanted to use this video today to talk, to talk about what I think a new player experience is like and what class you should play. So I would say that at the end of the day, Lost Ark is a game. It's a game. You play it for fun, right? You play a class, you play the game for fun. You want to enjoy the game. And because of that, my most important thing for picking a class as a new player, of course, is one, picking the class that you think is the most fun for you, right? But a lot of players, they don't know what is fun for them, or they might see something looking like it's fun, but not realize that there's a lot of requirements to it. So for me, whenever I talk about recommendations, I want to give these people an idea about what the, I guess, upsides and pitfalls of the class are, and then, you know, let them decide whether or not they want to play the class with those ideas in mind. Now, for me, when I think about the new player experience, again, it is about fun, right? And not only just fun, like, you know, eventually you have fun. I think it's super important for somebody to play a class where they will have fun coming out the gate. Because whenever I'm trying a new game, right? If I don't find that it's fun or enjoyable within the first maybe even week or so, I'm probably dropping the game. If I'm playing a character that is clunky, for that entire week, I'm not enjoying the game. So I'm probably going to drop it before I can even get to the point where I'm like, oh, okay, this character is starting to come together. This character is starting to feel better because I've gotten these unlocks. I think that when you're thinking about the new player experience, you really need to think about that piece, right? You need to think about what my the initial experience is like, because like meeting new people, when you're playing a new game, the first impression is the most important thing for that new player. So I'm going to jump into this tier list that I actually made for classes I would recommend for a new player a couple weeks back. I never actually uploaded the video. If you guys want me to upload the full video, let me know down in the comment section below, but I never did upload this video. Um, but yes. So here is the tier list, right? And I have S tier as the classes that I would recommend to new players the most and D tier as characters and classes that I would recommend to new players the least. And the main theme here is these classes for S and A are classes that I will, I guess maybe before we go into the themes, S, A, and B are the characters that I would recommend to new players. C and D are characters that I wouldn't recommend at all. S of course being, hey, this is an absolutely amazing class for new players. A being, it's good, it's really good, but probably not as good as S. Uh, and B, it's like, okay, you know, there are its downsides, but I do think that these classes are still decent for a new player to play. And here is my reasoning for where I put all these classes. Just like my comment about Breaker, the Brawl King Breaker, I think that it's very important for a new player to play a class where it's very easy to play and it's just about kind of pressing buttons. You don't need to think about anything else other than pressing your buttons. The only thing you need to think about is you yourself, where you are on the raid, how you're gonna interact with the raid, and then just pressing buttons to do damage while you're doing that. And these classes at the top, right? Paladin, Loyal Companion, Sharpshooter, Predator Slayer, Mayhem Zerker, Taijutsu Scrapper, Wind Fury Arrow, Artist, you know, FI Wardancer, uh, Blue Lancer, they are very much just that. 
you don't really have to worry about meter too much, right? I'd say with the exception of blue Gunlancer, you really don't have to worry about meter too much. All you're doing is going in and hitting the bosses. And the other and most important thing is that, as I mentioned in the breaker video, right? The Brawl King breaker, if you miss an attack with these characters, it's not like it's the end of the world. You just wait for your next attack to come up and boom, there we go. With a class like Brawl King Breaker, with a class like, let's go down, like, you know, Master Summoner, or with a class like FMH uh, Soul Eater, Knight's Edge Soul Eater, right? If you miss certain skills, you have to do a lot of mental gymnastics to figure out, okay, well, I missed this skill. What can I do to make up for that? What can I do to get Gage to be able to fill it up so I can go into my identity form, etc., etc. right? These classes at the top, all the S and A tiers, you don't have to do that. You just keep going, keep hitting your buttons, and keep just playing the game how you want to play it. You can argue, yes, Paladin kind of, but at the same time, the gameplay of Paladin doesn't change when you press the Z button, right? It just gives you an aura around yourself. Whereas some of these classes, the class completely changes when you press your Z button. Artillerist, Barrage Artillerist, you sit down in your wheelchair. When you, um, for the, um, let's say over here, the death blow striker, right? If you don't get your meter, you can't hit your esoteric skills. It's like things like that, where if you're missing your skills, it completely alters the way that you need to play the game and changes your game plan going forward, right? It really gives you like a, okay, I failed this thing. What do I do next? It's not like a, oh, I missed this attack. I can keep going with my original game plan. That's fine. And that's the most important thing for me when choosing a new character, a new uh, new character for a new player. Something that is easy to play where if you're not hitting your skills, which again, as a new player, a lot of times you're not going to know the fights. You're not really even going to be comfortable with how the class works entirely for a while. And because of this, if you miss your skills, it makes the game feel really bad. Let's hop, let, let, let's, let's, let's hop into the game real quick. And let me kind of show you this in uh, kind of real time as well. So let's take a look at my main, Striker, right? Well, Striker is a class that uses meter. And because of that, you need your skills to hit the boss in order to do a very smooth rotation. Now, in this situation, you know, I hit these two skills and then it goes into SO skill, right? But a lot of times you might hit, you know, you might go and press your, I don't know, your lightning whisper, right? You press your lightning whisper and it completely whips the boss. So what do you do then when it whips the boss? Well, oh, sorry, let's do this, right? Lightning whisper, and then it completely whips the boss. What do you do when it whips the boss? Well, I guess in the moment, you're gonna have to go and think about what's a skill that I can use to make up for that. Well, in my case, it's gonna be move flash, kick, right? I use move flash kick, and then that'll make up for the missed lightning whisper. But now I got to change the entire kind of game plan, the game flow that I was going to be doing before, because the normal rotation is right here, into lightning whisper, into this, this, into this, into this, and then this, into this, into this, into this, right? But when I do this and I miss this, I change this. Uh, sorry, let's go back again. So when I hit this, right? And then I miss my lightning whisper. I use moon flash kick to make up for it. I go into this. Now it's like, okay, well, now I gotta change up my entire game plan on the fly, right? Oh shoot. I my entire rotation's different now. What do I do? Do I hit this and then this into another skill that I wasn't gonna be using before? Or do I wait for my entire rotation to come back and you know go through the normal rotation? Those are things that you need to think about on the fly and for an experienced player that has been playing Striker for a good bit, that's pretty easy to do on the fly. But as a new player, as somebody who's just hopped into the game, that's something that's pretty hard to do on the spot if you're not familiar with the fight, if you're not familiar with your class itself. And even worse, let's say you miss this, right? And you're like, okay, now I go to Moon Flash Kick. But then you miss your Moon Flash Kick as well. Well, now what I do, right? These are all things that add up on like the stress levels and kind of like overall feeling of like the class feeling bad when you do this because it just makes for a very clunky playstyle. 
Now, luckily for Striker, a lot of times you only, you know, some skills, you only need one bubble to do it, right? So even if you do miss your stuff, you know, a new player can just press the button and do the skill and just do less damage. But some other classes, let's say like Sork, for example, or BK Breaker, if you miss those skills, you legit don't really have a rotation anymore. You just need to wait for those skills to come back up so you can get your meter to full, and then you can pop your identity. These are things that I would say are bad for a new player. When you miss your skills, you have to change your flow, your game plan, your way of playing completely. That's just something that I think is a very bad experience for a new player. Whereas we can compare this to Zerker. So on Zerker, normally for a player, you want to hit your red dust, right? And then you go into your damage skills. I don't really remember the exact rotation for Zerker because it's been a while since I've played it, but you get the idea, right? You basically press your red dust, hit the boss, and in that red dust window, you want to go and hit the boss with that buff. But the thing is, you can still hit re miss red dust, as important as it is, and your entire rotation still stays the exact same as before. Your game plan does not change one bit. You can miss red dust. You can miss your uh, overdrive, right? You can miss your, I don't know, what is this called? It's called Hellblade, right? You can miss all of these and your rotation and your game plan stays the exact same. Now, your damage might drop as a result of missing all these attacks, but at least your play style of the class stays the same. So your overall enjoyment of the game is still around the same as before. Whereas with other classes, you just feel really miserable when you miss certain skills. Yes, you can say damage is an important part of enjoying the game, right? You wanna do as much damage as possible because that's kind of the point of Lost Ark. But I think that that's very much the mindset of a current player, a player that's been playing for a while because we don't really have too much to enjoy, to be honest, outside of doing big damage because we've been playing the game for like forever. We're doing the same bosses over and over again. We're doing the same raids over and over again. And the only thing that really brings us any joy and excitement while doing a raid is doing more damage than other people. But for a new player, of course, they want to think about damage, right? A lot, there's plenty of new players who come up to me like, hey, what's the highest DPS class in the game? What's the strongest class in the game? Of course, they care about damage, right? But the thing is, as a new player, they probably come into this game understanding they're not going to be doing as much damage as somebody who is more experienced than them. They're going to understand that I'm probably not amazing at the game at the moment, so I'm probably not going to be doing damage regardless of whether I pick the strongest class or the weakest class right so at the end of the day what's most important to the new player is to play a class that's comfortable for them a play a class that whether they mess up or not it's not like they have to play this whole like numbers game in their head like oh which skill do i do use next oh shoot i used the wrong skill again like all of that just leads to feeling bad when playing the game and again as i mentioned before you don't want a new player to feel bad when they're playing the game because that enjoyment will overall ultimately lead them to probably drop the game. And that is why I recommend certain classes over others. And even though you're like, oh, okay, well, honestly, in my opinion, the front attacking archetype of the breaker, of the Sura breaker, is not as easy as the hitmaster archetype of the uh, Brawl King, right? But again, it's back to this idea of the fact that, yes, you can miss the front attacks on your Sura. You can miss all your flurry of attacks, your Z skill on the front. But regardless of whether you hit the front or not, the gameplay of the class still stays the same. Heck, with Sura Breaker, you actually don't even need to hit the boss for your skills to gain meter. You could just press the buttons and you'll gain meter eventually, right? And that's the most important You're thing back. for me when I'm playing a you. new character or recommending a new character to new players. You can Just check play the class the that's comfortable, play the class that you'll enjoy the most, and everything else comes second. The damage comes secondary, the kind of um, overall ease of play of the class, come, like ease of doing damage comes secondary. It's about ease of play of the class, comfortability and fun factor because let's be real like i said in the last video most people their first class that they pick 
are probably not going to be their main later on down the line anyways. For me, my main was Bard. I dropped that class from my main six probably around Brel time. Like, and I also had Deathblade as my main six, right? We can take a look at this. My main six was Deathblade, Bard, uh, where is it? Bard. Um, it was also Shadow Hunter. It was my Gun Lancer. It was my Glavier. Like it, all these classes th that I made when I was first started playing the game, none of them are on my main roster anymore. Except for I guess Striker. Striker I made around like um, Clown period, right? But again, that's not my original six classes. This came later on. So my advice is play the class that looks fun. Play the class that is simple, has a simple game plan. Don't play a class that gets too complicated in the weeds and makes you panic while in the middle of gameplay. So that is my philosophy. You guys can agree with it or not. It, you know, at the end of the day, there are opinions for a reason, right? But at the end of the day, that's how I recommend anybody who's looking to play this game for the first time to choose their classes. Choose a class that's simple, easy to play, and will let you learn the game and later on you can make an alt or swap mains it's not that hard if you want to play a harder class later that's something that you can definitely do but my experience is that learning how to play the game with an easier class is going to be a more enjoyable experience overall for anybody who's trying to get into the game so that's about it guys hopefully y'all enjoyed the video leave a comment in the comment section below on what you think about my opinions and as always, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like button, hit the sub button, ring the bell for notifications. And also I stream every single night on twitch.tv slash true. So if you want to discuss this more, come on my stream and we can talk about it in length. But if I don't see you on my stream, hopefully I'll see you guys on the next video. All right, guys, peace out.